embodiment or splitting. The embodied is that which wants to live, but life is fundamentally different from the postponement of suicide. Those who live in societies armed with atomic weapons become, whether they want to or not, at least semi-agents of a cynical community of suicides. That is, unless they were to decide to resolutely turn their backs on it. That is precisely what a continually growing number of people are doing. People who have emigrated since the 50s to Provence, Italy, the Aegean, California, Goa, the Caribbean, Oroville, Pune, Nepal, and last but not least, to Tibetan highlands in the interior of Germany and France. Two questions arise in connection with these phenomena. The first cynical, the second concerned. First, when it comes to the crunch, will that be far enough? And second, who has helped when the morally most sensitive people abandon the sinking ship of cynical society? We have good reasons to ask these questions, for the growing expectation of war nourishes both the cynical and the concerned view on what is coming. Immigration could be useful for both sides if we understand it correctly. For the immigrants, who will find out whether the greener pastures they seek exist. For those who remain behind, to whom the departure of the others says, there where you are, life is not possible. For us. Is it for you? Immigration could be taken somewhat less seriously if it were really only a fringe phenomenon. However, nothing permits this innocuous view of things. What is happening on the fringe today comes from the middle. Immigration has become a fact of mass psychology. Entire strata of the population have been living for a considerable period in an inner somewhere else. Not just in this country. Ah, just not in this country. They do not feel bound to what are called the fundamental values of society. One hears fundamental values and involuntarily sees mushroom clouds rise up. One hears those who are responsible proclaim their readiness to negotiate and feels, looking into their faces, the ice on the end of the world in their eyes. The main body of society has long since chosen to emigrate into leisure time and for them the word life gets its bright colour from memories of certain moments on happy vacations when the horizon opened up. What is to be done? Get out or collaborate? Flee or stand firm? Both alternatives seem inadequate. Their expressions are all overused and ambivalent. Are the escapists really comprehended with this word? Is there not infrequently a lot of cowardliness and melancholy, collaboration and opportunism in what is called standing firm? Is escapism without exception a conscious act? And don't a lot of so-called escapists, Aussteiger, already find themselves on the outside before they are asked about their own attitude? Is collaboration really cynically tinged everywhere? Is it not also motivated by the need for something positive and the need to belong? But it is also worthwhile to see the elements of truth in the expressions on both sides. Escapists are justified because they do not want to be entangled with open eyes in the intolerable cynicisms of a society in which the distinction between producing and destroying is becoming blurred. Collaboration is justified because individuals are also permitted to orient themselves towards survival in the short run. To flee is justified because it rejects a stupid courage, and because only fools let themselves be consumed by hopeless struggles. When there are spaces that are more amenable to life. Standing firm is justified because experience shows that every conflict that is merely avoided will catch up with us at every point of our flight. 
For this reason, the alternative that corresponds to our view of life must be grasped in a different way. It is that between embodiment or splitting. It is an alternative that addresses itself first to consciousness and only afterward to behaviour. It demands a radical priority of self-experience over morality. It is a matter of either consciously letting what is already torn apart grow together again, or unconsciously surrendering what is split off to the schizoid process. Integration or schizophrenia. Choose life or celebrate at the party of suicides. That may sound like a spiritual diet for individuals, but those who take it this way have heard right. Initially, enlightenment has no other addresses than those individuals who elude blind socialness. Gesellschaftlichkeit. Gesellschaftlichkeit. Without thereby being able to cease playing a role in society. One must therefore keep the idea of enlightenment alive, through embodied enlightenment, of course. Enlightenment means to affirm all anti-schizophrenic movements. The universities are scarcely the place where this happens. The universitas vitae is taught in other places. There, where people oppose the cynicism of split official consciousness, where they try out forms of living that open up a chance for conscious life in minds, bodies and souls. It unfolds in a broad field of individuals, the groups who carry on the cynical impulse and who attempt what no politics and no mere art can take from them. To tackle with their alertness the splits and unconscious elements that seep into individual existence. To grow into one's own possibilities and to participate in enlightenment's labour of cheering up, a part of which is to pay attention to the wishes that are the premonition of the possible.